All right, hello guys. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Invest 99L. I just made a video about 98L. This is a different system and we're gonna be talking about it. It could eventually pose a threat to the United States, but for now, we're most worried about Puerto Rico and some of the islands over there. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content. And also make sure to check out the links in the description for my social medias. Now we're gonna get right into things. We're looking at our high resolution visible satellite here. And you can see a lot of these detailed thunder clouds here. And actually when I put this into motion, I'm not gonna do it in this video because I only do slideshows basically. I don't usually show video footage as it would take a lot longer to make my videos. And I just like to get really good information out as quick as possible for you guys. So that is the sacrifice that I make. But you can kind of see the motion here. You can see that there is some twirl to it. And this one already looks pretty well developed. There's some pretty big thunder clouds in there, some showers and thunderstorms going on. I think this one's going to get pretty organized pretty fast and looks to intensify pretty fast as well. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. I just wanted to show the satellite imagery because you can see the spin there and you can see that this one is actually well on its way to becoming a tropical depression. Now here's NOAA's two-day graphical uh, tropical weather outlook and you can see this is from 8 a.m. and the satellite imagery I just showed you is from about I would say 11 a.m. so there has been some development already so it does look a little bit weaker on this one but you can see within the next two days there's only a 10% chance of development so we don't look for too much development within the next two days but once we get to the five day there is a 20% chance and I think that there honestly is a higher chance in this. I, I expect to see them take this into the orange and eventually the red range. I think that this one has a really good chance of developing quite well as it makes its way into some of those islands and as well as to Puerto Rico as well. We will talk about the direction this one's going to head in in just a little bit. Now, here's our sea surface temperature anomalies. I wanted to show this because this is important. I'm going to go over kind of all the things that are going to help it develop and all the things that will hinder it. A lot of people like that I do this with the tropical outlooks because it does explain a lot of what's going on. And this is more of an in-depth look. Most, most meteorologists and, and weather forecasters would not show you this much detail. They would prefer to just show you the forecast and get on with it. But I like to show a lot of the detail just because I think it's interesting to a lot of you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that it is interesting to a lot of my viewers. Now, you can see that it's about average where this storm is located. It's located uh, right in between that where that turquoise blue makes kind of a... I'll zoom in on it. Basically, it's located where I just zoomed in. And it is heading west-northwest into some of those warmer waters that are almost a degree above average or about a half a degree above average. I think that this the sea surface temperature for now won't play too much into this one, but there is above average, so this is going to be uh, one of the fair, favorable uh, aspects of this that are going to help this one develop. Now, here's your, basically, your Saharan dry dust or dry air, and you can see there is a lot of it to the north. You can actually see it on satellite down there. You can see where our storm is at, and then you can see just in the north of it, there is some dust and dry air, so this is going to be in the negative. I would say this is a negative. There is some dry air to the the west of it and to the north of it. So this will actually interfere with it a lot and try to hold it back from developing. It's a negative in the aspect that it's going to be a negative towards this one developing, but it is a positive for us that live in the United States or anywhere in the world because uh, it, it's a positive because hopefully we won't see this one develop too much. Now, I want to move on to shear. This one's going to be in the the positive, I guess, for development here for this one. I think that there isn't much shear in the where this one's looking to head, and I don't think shear will play too much into it. So the, as far as the upper level winds, this one has very favorable conditions to head into as far as winds. So that won't play too much into this one whatsoever. Now, looking at our spaghetti models, you can only see you can see that there's only three models in the spaghetti models that have picked up on this one so far. Later in the day, we will have more models starting to hop on this one. But for now, we just have these threes. So you can see that it is heading towards some of those islands as well as Puerto Rico in that general direction. I think that this one's going to head anywhere from uh, as far as like a, a north to south. I think that it'll be anywhere from 12 to about 20 north. I think that's where it's going to end up going. I will have my official forecast at the end as far as the track and the cone of uncertainty, so pay attention for that because I will be showing that at the end. Stay tuned for that 
Uh, here's the GEFS, which is the GFS ensemble model, and each member has its own little spaghetti uh, noodle here, if you will. And so this is all the different members. And then the black line is the mean average of all of them. So this one has basically a direct impact with Puerto Rico, and then on average, it kind of goes north of Haiti and Dominican Republic. Now, this would be good for it to... Just like with 98L, how it was going to be good news if it hit Florida, this one's it's going to be good news if this one hits Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic because of the fact that those tall mountains are really going to break this up if it can hit those regions. Uh, but if it doesn't hit those regions, it's the sky's the limit as far as development. It still can develop even if it hits those islands, but the chance is really lessened if it does make impact with land very, very early on. That's why that's usually good news. Now, here's your intensity guidance, and this is why I kind of disagree with NOAA as far as how slow they have this one developing. We only have one, two, three, four, five models here on the model intensity guidance, but you can see within 24 hours, they all have it basically hitting tropical storm status, and with the way it's developed so far, I would not doubt that at all. Keep in mind, all the updates from NOAA came from about 8 a.m., so we do actually, this is a little bit more updated, so maybe NOAA just didn't underestimated it and maybe they'll update their forecast soon and kind of agree more with the models but nevertheless the models do have this one becoming a tropical storm within 24 hours and four out of the five have it becoming a category two hurricane and then one has it becoming a category three so really the sky is the limit with this one and this could be our first major hurricane in the Atlantic for the 2019 season which is interesting and just like all the other tropical disturbances we've had this summer and fall I'm going to be doing, you know, updates on this one almost daily, if not daily, maybe even twice a day sometimes, depending on what, if we see some changes in what we're seeing. But nevertheless, they have this one intensifying quite a bit here, which is very, very interesting. Now we're going to take a look at the GFS model here. This is for now, you can see that, and this is wind speed, and you can also see the pressure of this one. It's at 1010, uh, 1010 millibars, and you can see our center of low pressure. So we're going to move on one. This is 48 hours out and you can see it's at 1,006 millibars so it is intensifying by this point point. and you can see we have about 32 mile per hour winds by this point so in 48 hours so Sunday early early Sunday morning maybe 2 a.m. Sunday this is the conditions we'll be looking at and then 72 hours out you can see we have a 992 millibar low pressure system with up to, it looks like, 52 mile per hour wind. So we're quickly approaching hurricane status in 72 hours with this one. And you can see it still hasn't interacted with any land. So that usually spells trouble if it hasn't interacted with any land. Or the dry air doesn't look to wind, win out on most of the models, it looks like. 96 hours out, you can see we have 59 uh, knot winds is the max there with a 988 millibar low pressure system. So this one's intensifying greatly over the next few days, over the next four or five days. And then you can see by hour 120, so this is about at about five days, you can see we have 65 knot winds and then uh, still a, a 987 millibar low pressure system. And I'm only going to do a five-day forecast on this one just because it's, it's irresponsible to go out further than that. I'd rather make an update later on. Than, than to try to jump the gun and make some sort of 7 or 10 day forecast for this one. Just because tropical storms are so unpredictable. But nevertheless, all again, all the models have this one intensifying greatly and heading in a general west or northwest direction. The winds are intensifying. The low pressure system is dropping. So this one spells trouble to me. And you can see at one... 144 hour 144 we're going into kind of the extended range it does interact with some of those islands and starts to weaken it's at it's back up to 995 millibars back down to 53 knot winds and then at hour 168 which is friday early early friday morning uh we can see it's at 1000 millibars again and at 46 knots so it looks to greatly kind of diminish after this point according to the gfs model i don't really know if that's going to be the case but for now it looks like that's what the GFS thinks is going to happen with this one. Now, here's my official forecast for this one, Invest 99L, my five-day forecast. You can see on the right there, we're at 
the location is 9.8 degrees north with 41.7 degrees west. That's the location. The winds are at about 25 knots, same as 98L. And then you can see our low pressure system is at 1,014 millibars, looking to intensify very, very fast after this point. And the movement is northwesterly. And really, you can see the cone of uncertainty. We can see that this is going to hit those islands. Most likely, there is a chance it goes to the north and there is a chance that it goes to the south, but it's in general heading directly for Puerto Rico. And we'll have to see if it goes to the north, south, or a direct hit. Again, as far as for the future and for most of the people that live in, in the United States, Cuba, Bahamas, Mexico, it would be good news if this one interacts with a lot of land early on so that it can't intensify into a major hurricane or anything like that. But if it doesn't interact with land, you know, like I said, the sky's the limit. It does have very favorable conditions, and this one looks to intensify very quickly. So who knows? This could be our first major hurricane of the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this this 99L, this Invest 99L forecast, this first one. I'm going to be bringing a lot of updates for this one, like I said before. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe for those updates as we're going to be tracking the tropics throughout this 2019 tropical season. And heading into the winter, we will be doing winter updates for all the winter storms. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video. Stay safe during this one and make sure to pay attention to NOAA's forecast and your local station's uh, forecast for this one.